a little bit more at um, equilibrium constants. So you have this reaction here, um, hydrogen and nitrogen yielding ammonia, and it's an equilibrium. So you can start on this side of the um, uh, reaction, or you can start on this side of the reaction. It doesn't really matter. Eventually, you're going to reach equilibrium at the same point. So on, um, on this side here, so on the left, you can see we're finding concentration versus time. And initially, we have um, our reactants, hydrogen and nitrogen. So we have high concentrations of those, and we don't have any ammonia. As the reaction goes on, the, the concentration of the reactants are going to decrease, and the concentration of your products are going to increase um, until they start to, to level out here. And then this is where equilibrium, um, right here, this is where equilibrium is achieved. Um, after, the, after this point, you can see there's no longer a change in uh, your concentrations of your reactants or products, so they remain constant. Um, the same thing happens if you started um, on this side of the reaction. So if you started with ammonia, so here we have high concentration of ammonia and that zero concentration of um, hydrogen and nitrogen. And so now, now this is your reactant. Um, and it's going to decrease in concentration over time. These are your products. They're going to increase in concentration over time. But eventually you reach equilibrium at the same, at the same point. So it doesn't really matter which side of the reaction you're starting on. Um, eventually you'll, you'll reach equilibrium. Okay. So, if, and you can tell um, if a reaction is going to be is going to make a lot of products if it's going to go in the forward direction or if it's going to go in the reverse direction just by looking at the value of k. So if you have a really big k, k, think of, wait, remember what k is. Um, let's see. So it is k is your, your products over reactants. k equals products over reactants. So if it's really big, that means you have like a big p over like a little tiny r. So you have just a little bit of. Um, reactants and a lot of products. Uh, so you at, at equilibrium, you're going to make a lot of products. Well, if I'm trying to react. Um, when you have a K that's much less than one, so that's, that's really, really small, um, then you, you're going to have um, a little bit of products over a whole bunch of reactants at equilibrium. So, you know, you're going to make, you're going to make more reactants. So it's going to go in the opposite direction. It's going to go to the left. Um, so just by looking at K, you can tell if you're going to make more products or more reactants as the reaction is written. So in this problem here, I tell you, you have, you have this reaction, hydrogen and iodine, give you hydrogen and iodide, um, and they give you a K at two different temperatures. And so your, your equilibrium constant is only constant as long as you keep the temperature constant. If you change the temperature, then the equilibrium constant changes as well. So here at 298K, the uh, equilibrium constant is 794, and then at um, 700K, so sub, uh, the equilibrium constant is 55. So you can see when you increase the temperature, the equilibrium constant actually goes down. And so they're asking you in this question, um, is, is the formation of hydrogen iodide favored more at the higher or the lower temperature? So you have to ask yourself, what, what is hydrogen iodide? This is, this is a product, so at what temperature am I going to make more products? Um, whichever one has the bigger K. So whoever has the bigger K has more products over reactants. Um, so that will be the temperature that we're going to make um, the uh, more products. So in this case, the, the higher K, 794, is, is greater than 55. So at the lower temperature, you actually make more products. Right. Um, so it turns out it's really easy to manipulate the equilibrium constants. So you can do things like reversing a reaction or multiplying a reaction by a certain number. And you can figure out, you can calculate what the new equilibrium constant would be. You don't actually have to do the reaction, you can just calculate it. Um, so this, this process is going to seem a little bit, uh, if you remember Hess's law, when we were dealing with um, enthalpy in, in chapter 5, uh, if you reverse a reaction, you do something to the delta H. If you multiply it by 2, then you do something to the delta H. Um, the manipulation of K is, the, what you actually do to the K is going to be different, but the idea is kind of the same. You can manipulate the reaction, and then you can um, calculate a new K, just change your K that way. So suppose I have this reaction, um, N2O4 yielding 2NO2. I can write the equilibrium constant expression, just the products over the reactants. We're used to the stoichiometric coefficients. Don't forget that. That's going to be important. Now, what if I reverse this reaction? Um, so what if I just, I made 
this my reactant now, and, and this is my product. So I flip it around over here. So if I, if I flip the reaction, how does that change the equilibrium constant? Can I figure it out? So this is, you know, flipping the reaction. How does that change the, uh, the equilibrium constant? So I make my, my products are now my reactants. My reactants are now my products. Um, so I, I write the equilibrium constant again. Now it's products over reactants raised to the stoichiometric co coefficients. That, that part hasn't changed. Um, it's just the, um, now, now what I'm calling my reactants products are, are different. So I have N2O4 over NO2 squared. Before I had NO2 squared over N2O4. So what's the difference? I just, I have the reciprocal now. So if I take one over my uh, original K, I should get the K for this reaction. So when you reverse the reaction, you take the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant. And so if you flip your reaction, take one over your K. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, we can multiply the reaction by some number. So here, if we had, and again, same reaction, N2O4, N2O2, N2 I write my equilibrium constant, and here's the, uh, here's the value. So I'd have to give you that, at least one to start off with. Um, so now, if I multiply this whole reaction by 2, so now I'm just going to multiply this by 2, and then 2 times 2 gives me 4, right? So now I have, I just multiplied everybody by 2, here, so that I end up with a 2 here and a 4 here. And I do products over reactants, so now I have NO2 to the 4 divided by N2O4 squared. This is the same thing as this squared. So this is the same as NO2 squared divided by N2O4, that whole quantity squared. So all I do now is take this K, this is the, the original K that we had, and I'm just going to square it. So if I multiply a reaction by 2, then I, I raise it to the second power. Turns out if I multiply it by 3, I raise the K to the third power. If I multiply it by 4, I raise it to the fourth power. If I divide it by 2, that's like multiplying by a half, then I would raise it to the one half power. Um, so if you multiply a reaction by some number, then you raise the equilibrium constant to whatever that power is. And the very last thing that you might want to do is um, add up reactions. So just like we did with the pethazole, you, know, you add your reactions, how does that change the K? So let's, let's see if we can derive that expression as well. So if we had these two reactions, we had A yields B and C yields D. If I add these up, remember how to add reactions? Everything on the left side of the arrow stays on the left side of the arrow. Everything on the right side of the arrow stays on the right side of the arrow. So I end up with A plus C uh, yields B plus D. So let's just look at this first one. Can I write the equilibrium constant for the first one? It's just going to be products over reactants. And here's my second reaction. I get products over reactants. So I have B over A and I have uh, D over C. Now, this is my, my third when I add them up. You know, so adding them up, you know, what do we get? Um, let's see, so it's still going to be products over reactants. But now it's B times D, because those are my products, divided by A times C. And if you think about it, that's the same as B over A times D over C. If I just separate them like that, this B over A, that's the same thing as K, um, K1, right? That's the same thing as K1. And this is the same thing as K2. So when I um, when I add